Hey everybody, welcome back to Source Talk Mopars. Today I'm in Fresno, California with my buddy David. And we're on the hunt for a rear end. All right, now we did a ton of research before going into the yard. There is no way two of us were gonna be able to go through hundreds of acres of cars without already knowing what we needed to look for. It's just impossible, there's not enough time in the day. So we were able to identify three things to look for in this mission. One, which was definitely a Hail Mary. If we could find it, amazing. It'd be, especially in 2022. If we could find it eight and three quarters, it'd be amazing. You know, they don't really carry that stuff that old anymore, at pick and pulls and the pick you pull, all those type of deals. But they do every once in a while still have one. So it's not too far out to not look. Definitely look if you're going to the yard. Um, but that was definitely number one. Number two, which is probably one of the more popular swaps, especially nowadays, we were gonna look for an 8.8. .8. Now the 8.8 .8 are four rear ends. Uh, for B body and A bodies, typically you're looking at Explorers from the 90s and Rangers from the 90s. You know, Mustang stuff, well, if it's older, it might work, but a lot of it was independent suspension from late 90s on. And we knew that if we were to find an Explorer rear end, it would also come with disc brakes and the possibility of having a limited slip of 410. The third option we were gonna look at, which was just a why not. You know, if we couldn't get this eight and three quarters or an 8.8, .8, we're gonna look for a dually rear end. Now, a lot of the dually rear ends come in low gear sets. A lot of them come with limited slips. And the older ones, were a little bit smaller of an axle. It's funny to say the Dana 60 is smaller, but you could find dually Dana 60s. So those are the three things we were looking for going into the yard for this mission. Found the guy that had a dually, they were parting out, and we told him what we were doing, and he wouldn't give it to us. Oh, but they're not going to make us price it. Yep, they're not going to price it. Yeah, it's got disc. We got 98, so that's the right year. 373. Oh, man. This guy right here is named Alex. He's an army vet. He and his old man were in the yard looking for some parts. He spotted David and I crawling underneath trucks, vans, cars. Saw the lugs of tools, the cameras. We just had to come over and strike a conversation, see what we were doing. So we took 15 minutes, relaxed a little bit, talked about the 3K Drag Challenge, the YouTube channel, and uh, just sat there and talked shop, right? Because that's what we car guys do. Oh, it's got a tag on it. Oh, I can't see any of that. Oh, I can't. I can't see Beautiful nail on the video. 350. Well, hell no. You're the one 355s. 373. Aye. Okay. Don't break. Uh, 373. 373. Okay, so this is the Eddie Bauer one. We're looking up right now to see if it's a limited slip or not. Alright, so it says if it's a 4L10, the L means limited slip. So was this, this one, the L? Yeah, this one's the L. The other one's a 410. This one says 4L10, so this is gonna So be we found a freaking 410 limited slip. Hell yeah, with this brakes. With this brakes. Oh, it's even got a sway bar. We're gonna jump that one though. Alright. Hell yeah, here we go. Now we just gotta figure out <laughs> how to get it out. Because they're supporting it. Hopes on the and, springs. Hopes and dreams. Here's a fun fact. Before every single car gets placed into the yard, 
they remove the jacks and the jack stands. Now they do this so that somebody like us doesn't try to use those stock jack stands to lift the car and access some parts and then just leave it on the jack for somebody else to come in, work underneath it, and have a critical failure and potentially injure themselves or lose their life. So it's smart, also a huge pain. <laughs> now, in my opinion, one of the best things about being a part of the car community is the sheer camaraderie amongst enthusiasts. You know, we're always willing to give each other a hand. We love seeing other people get their projects off the jack stands, rolling on four tires for the first time. That's what it's all about, right? Now, if you remember Alex and his father, they spotted David and I sitting there scratching our heads around this Explorer, trying to figure out how we were going to get the rear axle. So they came back around and we sat there and talked about what we were having an issue with. You know, as I mentioned, it was the fact that the rear end was supported uh, on those wheel jack stand things. We couldn't get it out. So after brainstorming real quick, we decided we were just going to lift it. And Alex and his father helped us lift this car so that we could throw the jack stand underneath the spare tire mount and free up the axle for us to get. So Alex, if you're watching this, man, I really appreciate the help. Thank you so much. We've got that axle now ready to go for this dart and you are a huge part of that. So thanks. Now, if you look at this tag, the first letters on the bottom left, number gen letters rather, you'll see 4L10. Now, the 4 and the 1 0 references the ratio. So, if this were a 373 posi, you'd see 3L73. Obviously, this is the 410, as you can see here. The L is the indicator that it's a limited slip. The L is the ticket. And out of all eight, there were only two limited slips, and only one of those was the 410. And that's the one that we found. All right, we got it out. I'm gonna take the drive shaft along with us too. 8.8, .8, 410, limited slip. Okay, we've got the axle out now, but this is when we stopped recording for the day. And this is why. So apparently, news to us wheelbarrows and carts are not a thing anymore you cannot go and get a cart or a wheelbarrow to help shuttle your parts over to the cashier apparently a lot of them were stolen and they just stopped offering them the only way to move those heavier items like axles engine blocks and really anything you just can't carry is to use that giant freaking h-frame lift hoist well that's hundred and fifty dollars to rent and this is a budget build so that's not gonna happen so David and I, while holding cameras, tools, and this rear end, drug that thing 400 yards to the cashier, paid for it, they had to of course go through everything and they mark every little part on it. And then from there we had to go to the truck, load it in the back. Oh my gosh, we were so tired. Could barely lift our arms after that because that weighs about 300 pounds. If you haven't lifted a complete rear end assembly in a while, brakes and everything, it's heavy. So we accomplished our goal. We got it in the back of the truck. It's now here in the shop. You need to do a few things before we throw it in the car. But my gosh, if you're gonna go and you're looking for a rear end, bring your own wheelbarrow.